things with you across the country. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good luck getting on the plane now. It's uh, not your regular no. sense. No, you would get it on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> They'll charge you a fortune. Oh, yeah. So, during the day, this was sort of the gentleman's club, so all the men would come back here and have a smoke or a newspaper and do all the things that men thought was fun back in the day. The night was converted into the sleeping quarters for the 12 dining crew members and porters. It's a Pullman-style sleeping car, which means the upper berth would fold down and become the top bunks, and the seats below would fold together and become bottom bunks. For extra privacy at night, they would slide headboards like the one at the back there, in these grooves in between the seats, and curtains would come down from up top, so you're all secluded into your bunk. When we received the car, all the wooden here looked like the back door there. That sort of alligator effect. And so we had to restore it back to how it looks now. And this car does not have the fancy inlay patterns that we'll see later on, but this was still a first class car, even though it was for the crew. <laughs> Down the hallway here, we'll pass by the gentleman's lounge and washroom, which has the original nickel plated tin sinks. And the next car we're heading into is the day parlor car. <coughs> two-hour trip, it costs twice as much as a regular first-class ticket. So it costs you $88 to sit in one of these chairs down the end for two hours, as opposed to $50 for seven days down the way. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I mean, it was the politicians and businessmen. They have the deepest pockets in society, and sometimes they were sharing pockets with everybody else, so. <laughs> you said that right. <laughs> Things never change. Yeah. And so, when we received the car, everything, including the brass hat racks above here, was painted industrial green. Now, we're actually quite thankful that they painted over the racks. During the metal shortage of World War II, they are stripping a lot of these cars with their brass pieces. And because it was painted the exact same color as the wood, the workers thought it was wood, and they left them in here. So we have the original hat racks today. Wow. But industrial green paint went very well with the upholstery that was back here. Yes. And this here is the 1950s design. Well, this one over here is the 1929 design. This is not the original upholstery, though. It's actually based off of photographs uh, that we'll be using to replicate more chairs, as well as the framework we have up front here. <laughs> so we're supposed to have actually 30 of these swiveling pilot chairs lining the entire car on both sides. These oh, guys no. are just placeholders for now. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. This car here, we'll talk about our china. This here is the museum's collection of china, glassware, and silverware, starting with the brown maple leaf over here on my right in a dinner setting, followed by the Royal Alexander Band on my left. These plates here would have been used in the Royal Alexander Hotel in Winnipeg, Manitoba, as well as other CPR hotels. We have two plates in the center here used on CP's luxury princess class steamships. And then over here, we have the blue maple leaf in an alternate dinner setting and a breakfast setting on my left here. One of the things I like to ask my younger passengers is what do you guys think this piece here in the middle of the table is? You guys can come over here and take a look. <laughs> what do you guys think that uh, right in the middle of the table is? Uh, what do you normally have for breakfast? Toast. Um, toast? Yeah, exactly. So that is the toast holder. So back in the day when they made the toast, you would well, you toast it up. Then you would butter it or put your jam on it and then put it in the rack there and wait for it to cool down. And then you have cold, soggy toast. Sounds <laughs> 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 great. 
That's why we don't use those anymore. Okay. <laughs> it's called when they gave it to us. No, are these Not original? And no jam. You had to do it yourself after it was called. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was the other option. Yeah. Are these the original? The light fixtures are not the original light fixtures. Uh, when, like I was talking about before, with the metal shortage of World War II, there's, they stripped a lot of these cars. So this oh, car okay. it does not have any. But most of the cars here that will pass through do not have a lot of their original light fixtures. Those were eventually sent over to Germany and fired <laughs> at somebody else. So it's all individual pieces, hand done, and they would carve out into the wood the general idea of what they wanted. Then they would take almost like cookie cutter pieces and. Uh, carve them out for the tinier other pieces, dip them in hot, uh, sorry, dye them, dip them in hot sands to prevent the colors from running, and then put them in like a puzzle. Wow. It's all one person that would have to do all of these inlay patterns in this car, so they all look relatively identical. Huh. The chairs in here have been restored to the original blue casket leather upholstery with the black walnut frames. On the front there we have the 1950s design with the orange vinyl and the frames painted gray green. And during the, the time that these cars were running, you could actually come to the dining car even if you weren't coming here for a meal. So this was almost like a, a lounge car in a way. You could come and have a coffee and a little snack and just relax. Because you'd be spending about three and a half days to even a full week in one of those chairs down the way there. It's not the most comfy all the time. <laughs> it's a stretch your legs. Floral upholstery, brass light fixtures, and double windows. On a modernized side here, we have the lovely industrial green paint I was talking about earlier. Avocado green upholstery, aluminum light fixtures, and single windows. You can choose which ones you like more. <laughs> also, when this car was modernized, it was renamed. So the Somerset became the Traverse. There's a few more. So yeah. this here was the nice. cheapest form of first class. It was twenty-two dollars and fifty cents to rent one side, or fifty dollars to rent both sides. And then that would determine if you're on the top bunk or bottom bunk. And there's only one ladder on board here, so you had to wait your turn for the porter to let you up into your bunk at night and let you back down in the morning. Okay. If you had to get up in the middle of the night, there'd be a button you press to call the porter, and he'd come through and let you down. However, he might not hear your call sometimes, as we work in long shifts, about twenty-one hours a day to be exact and they try to sneak in a few extra hours of sleep. <laughs> One of our board members here at the museum actually worked on this car in 1967 during the 67 Expo to Montreal and said that you learn to sleep with your eyes open very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and so down the hallway here we'll pass by three more private rooms. You can rent one, two, or all three depending on what space you needed or how much money you're willing to fork over as they're very expensive. The first room, one of those drawing rooms I was talking about before, was $90 to rent. And there's actually a few other prices you'd have to tack on. It was $152.40 to get on the train, $10 per day of travel, then your room or seat cost, and if you're going one direction, or there and back. So by the end of the trip, that room down the hallway there would be just over $634. Or in nowadays money, about $7,200. <laughs> it's about the price of uh, Rocky Mountaineer or the Via Rail. <laughs> where the water was kept for drinking. And putting it back in, we replaced it with two showers for the purpose of housing over in space with all the rooms. However, we don't have it. At the back of the train, it was sort of the lobby for the five-star hotel on wheels that the Trans-Canada was. Everybody would come back here and have a drink, smoke, play games, and socialize. 
The selling point of the car is the solarium room at the back here, which houses Vita glass windows, which were advertised to allow the healthy UV rays of the sun in, but then we haven't actually stand outside. Essentially, that was the communal tanning room back there. <laughs> <laughs> Now, beforehand, these cars here were pretty much an open car with just seats, uh, floor, and wheels. And that was about it. But then they realized that people were getting covered in soot from the locomotive up front, so they decided to put a roof over top. <laughs> Thanks. And then these are also the precursors to the dome cars that you see on a lot more modern trains.